grace meets us in our brokenness and in our pain. It's called intersections of grace. And we need to be much better about being able to observe those moments of grace in our lives. I picked my own father up this week who I had not seen in 10 years. And he's a bit of a curmudgeon. If you don't need, know what that word means, it just means surly. <laughs> he lives in Alaska off the grid. He's lived a hard life. And he's not, the, he's not the necessarily the easiest man to communicate with. But I saw an intersection of grace that was so powerful, exhausted. I, I bought my father a plane ticket. I was so convicted after watching Craig and the reconciliation that he had with his own family as he was about to die. I said, I don't have the right to not reach out to my father. I need to extend grace to him. Not because, not because he deserves it, but because I have been transformed by Jesus and therefore he does deserve it. And so it says, honor your father. It didn't say if they're a good father. It just says, honor him. So I, I flew him down. I picked him up. Within 10 minutes, he was cussing at me because he couldn't smoke um, quick enough. And, uh, and then he insisted on smoking in my car. And I was just trying to extend grace all day. Um, and then I, I, he like decided to honor my willingness to let him smoke by not smoking. But then I had to stop every 15 minutes all the way back from Seattle to Portland so that he could take a smoke break, like three cigarettes. I'm like, Dad, how are you? How do you talk? <laughs> But we get to my house and my daughter, my seven-year-old little girl, Hattie, the first thing she does, here's a grandpa she's never met, never seen in her life, doesn't know him from Adam. She runs up to him. He's a total stranger to her. She doesn't even know what he really looks like. She runs up to him and wraps her arms around him and says, hi, grandpa. And she was so excited. She just stood by him, kept her arm around him. And my dad had two strokes last year. He's only 60 years old, but he's just drank so heavily and, and it abused his body so much that his health is failing, failing him much earlier than it ought to. And he couldn't walk very well. And I, and I said, we got to get grandpa back to, his, to Aunt Penny's house so he can get some sleep because he'd been up for a whole day. And uh, my wife and I were standing in the doorway and we were talking for a minute and I look out the doorway and there's my daughter grabbing my dad's hand and walking him to the car, helping him into the car. And I'm like, that is a moment where Jesus showed up. We're not seeing him because we're not looking for him. 